Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how to make safe and accurate high-voltage measurements. Your microphones will stay muted throughout the presentation. If you have questions, we will address them at the completion of the presentation using the Q&A feature of WebEx. You are, however, welcome to type in the questions at any time. Our presenter today is Mike Hoyer. Mike has a Bachelor's of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from the New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury, New York. He has over 34 years of radio broadcasting experience and over 24 years of applications engineering experience providing solution-oriented results to customers worldwide via email, phone, WebEx, training seminars, trade shows, online videos, white papers, and on-site demonstrations. Mike, it's all yours. Well, thanks, Krista. Can you hear me clearly? You're good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm Mike Hoyer, applica uh, Applications Engineer for uh, HPM. Um, we've entitled this one Lightning Strikes, but basically we're going to talk about how to make safe and accurate high power measurements. So let's get started. Basically, the agenda or goal in this webinar is to identify and explain the key factors that will ensure safe and accurate measurements in high power environments. And these include safety measures, voltage terminology, IEC categories, isolation, speed, accuracy, analysis, and technical support. I will explain how these factors apply to some of the more common uh, high power applications, uh, including switch gear, high voltage impulse, lightning, and efficiency testing, and producing results per the industry standards. Also throughout this webinar, we're going to provide some specific links for additional information. In fact, at, the, at, the, at this moment, I'd like to uh, point out that uh, at our website, hpm.com, there are even uh, some additional free webinars available on demand. At our training tab, you can choose webinars such as choosing the right amplifier, um, filter, um, measurement cables, and shielding. And there's a variety of other webinars that would be relevant that tie in to this application as well. So you can get information on articles, uh, brochures, case studies, data sheets, and white papers. Now there are a variety of measurement applications that require additional safety and accuracy, which isolation systems can offer, including power and ballistic applications. And today we're going to be focusing on some of the more common power applications, as I've uh, listed here. Lightning monitoring system, one of more one of my more exciting uh, type of uh, applications. Spacecraft in NASA actually have uh, used this and continue to use this um, in Florida. And it basically incorporates millions of volts. Uh, impulse testing of transformers and surge arresters. That can involve anywhere from several hundred thousand volts up to several millions of volts. And there are standards in the industry for impulse testing from IEEE and IEC, and we'll be talking more about those standards. Switchgear testing involving circuit breakers and fuses may incorporate up to several tens of thousands of volts and several hundred thousands of amps. And standards in the switchgear testing arena include STL, a short circuit testing liaison agreement, and also UL489. And then there's the efficiency testing. We'll talk a little bit about that involving vehicle, aircraft, electrical drivetrains, which may incorporate up to 1,000 volts and even 500 amps. Now, all the uh, high-power applications we just mentioned have a unique and common challenge, and that is measuring high voltage, which contains high electrical fields, and or high current, which contains high magnetic fields. Now, our biggest concerns in this type of environment our safety for the user and the equipment, uh, making a reliable and accurate measurement, and getting the results and support needed. So our objective in this webinar is to address and meet these challenges and concerns by identifying and explaining these key factors that will ensure a safe and accurate high power measurement. Now these include isolation, high speed, accuracy, analysis, and technical support. Isolation will ensure the safety of both the user and the equipment and eliminate ground loops. High speed and accuracy will enable accurate measurements and meet industry standards. And the analysis 
will make it that much easier to obtain calculated results and produce answers within the industry standards. And sometimes most importantly, tactical support with a proven track record to assure you getting the results that you need. So we'll begin with the most important concern, and that is safety. Uh, some or most of this may seem obvious, but it's important enough to remind ourselves to be safety conscious and be aware of the danger involved. Um, measuring voltages above 50 volts DC is considered dangerous and requires special precautions. The risk of electric shock occurs when voltage between an active part and ground or between active parts is greater than 50 volts DC or 25 volts AC and short circuit current is greater than 3 milliamp AC or 12 milliamps DC. In fact, OSHA and related agencies mandate measurements above 50 volts DC to be performed by trained, qualified, and authorized personnel. So you want to be sure to know the rules and the limits for each CAT code, which we'll talk about in a moment, and never connect to live or energized circuits and never assume that they're off. You want to be sure and wear safety glasses and safety gloves and be safety conscious and never use one hand on, for example, on a metal pipe while attempting to connect to a high voltage point with the other hand. You want to make sure, put one hand in the pocket and use one hand to make the measurement. So let's touch a bit on uh, voltage terminology. Exactly uh, what does it mean when someone says, I want to measure 120 volts AC? Is that RMS, peak, peak to peak, phase to ground, phase to phase? You want to always check and ask these questions whenever someone states a voltage or current in order to determine the amount of voltage involved. Now the waveform diagram on the right shows the relationship between RMS, peak, and peak to peak such that 120 volts RMS equates to 170 volts peak, which equates to 340 volts peak to peak. Uh, generally in the power industry, voltage level is an AC RMS value. And in all other fields, voltage level is an AC or DC peak. Now, the IEC has established a list of categories, or CAT for short, which identify RMS over voltage levels, or categories where an instrument can be connected. So CAT0, which used to be called CAT1, is basically not directly connected to the mains. CAT2 would be directly connected to low voltage mains. CAT3 directly connected to distribution, uh, the distribution part of low voltage mains. And CAT4 is directly connected to the source of low voltage mains installation. Uh, yeah, as you can see in the diagram on the bottom right, the closer to the grid you get, the higher the energy and the class. And I've listed uh, some examples for each uh, of the different CAT categories. And uh, in addition to that, uh, the levels of overcurrent protection. So CAT2 may be the main sockets in the house, which have three levels of overcurrent protection. CAT3 may be circuit breakers or junction boxes with two levels of overcurrent protection. And CAT4, ripple control units, which would have one level of overcurrent protection. Just a quick note on connectors and cables. You want to avoid using connectors and cables with exposed metal contacts, as you see in the uh, box with the red X. The box with the green checkbox, basically those have safe connectors and the metal contacts are covered. And you want to be sure to avoid using BNC cables above 500 volts peak. That's usually their maximum rating, whereas banana connectors and cables are designed for higher voltages. Well, we've all probably floated an instrument at least once in our lifetime. Actually, before floating the instrument many years ago while in college, um, I was uh, designing an AC regulator circuit. And uh, immediately after uh, attempting to measure the AC output with a scope probe, I saw a spark <laughs> and tripped the breaker because I shorted the AC output to ground. So then I decided to float the instrument and didn't realize there were lethal voltages on the case of the instrument. And unfortunately, I still see from time to time people floating an instrument in order to make a high voltage measurement by disconnecting the earth ground of the measuring device. Now, unfortunately, this creates a huge safety issue 
It's unsafe for the user due to the potential lethal voltages on the system's chassis, and it's unsafe for the instrument, which is subjected to, uh, it basically subjects the internal electronics and power supply to additional stress causing operational problems and measurement quality issue. So what is the solution? Well, the solution is to use isolation because the safety of the user is going to be ensured because the isolation places a barrier between the user and the high voltage. Um, pretty much the same thing for the equipment. Uh, the equipment um, is going to be placed Basically, the safety of the equipment uh, is there's a barrier between the equipment and the high voltage due to the isolation, which will also eliminate ground loops, noise, and additional errors, which will prevent current from flowing between ground locations by eliminating the path between ground of the signal source and the equipment. And we'll talk more about isolation in each of the different power applications in just a moment. Here's a list of some of the typical methods used to connect high voltages. We'll also talk uh, about some of the currents as well for uh, making measurements. Uh, each method has its uh, pluses and minuses. Of course, uh, a direct connection is uh, one of the more easier connections to make. Um, the plus there, as well as high accuracy and high bandwidth. Unfortunately, you're limited to the maximum input of the amplifier, and in most cases, a high voltage amp will have a maximum of about plus or minus 1,000 volts. So another alternative to voltages higher than 1,000 volts would be a high voltage divider or an attenuator. It's going to take the large voltages and attenuate them to a smaller voltage. So the plus there is you have high accuracy and high bandwidth voltage dividers that are available. You want to make sure you do check the specifications. However, it may be difficult to install, and they do come at a higher cost. High voltage probes pretty much do uh, the same thing. Basically, a large voltage is attenuated to a smaller voltage. However, uh, they have low accuracy and are difficult to use with isolated amplifiers. The only uh, positive there is they do come at a low cost. Now, the uh, currents can be measured with a current shunt which measures the voltage drop across a shunt resistor. Uh, the plus there is you have high accuracy, high bandwidth. Unfortunately, you have small voltage output, maybe a few millivolts on a high potential, which makes it difficult to install or measure. Um, some of the most common uh, methods that I've seen are current transformers. Uh, you're taking large currents, transformed to small currents, uh, and converted to voltage. Um, they provide high accuracy and high bandwidth, but they may be difficult to install. And they also require signal adaption because most of them do have a current output which needs to be converted to a voltage, um, most often with a conversion amp. Now, current clamps provide uh, an easy way and a low-cost way to make and maybe a quick measurement. However, they do provide low accuracy and limited bandwidth, and there are various technologies to measuring uh, currents with a current clamp. Well, now that we've covered some of the more uh, important uh, high voltage terminology, what we're going to do is apply what we've covered to each of the more common high power measurement applications we've mentioned earlier, including efficiency testing, switchgear testing, high voltage impulse testing, and lightning monitoring. So here, uh, we'll start with uh, efficiency testing. Uh, this could be either a vehicle's electric drivetrain or the drivetrain of an aircraft's auxiliary power unit. Uh, regardless, uh, this can be any power application that requires the measurement up to plus minus 1,000 volts. So in this efficiency testing example, uh, you'll often need to measure voltages up to 1,000 volts DC from the battery or currents up to 300 amps from the battery or uh, from the frequency inverter or converter, you may need to make uh, voltage measurements up to plus or minus 500 volts AC, currents up to 500 amps AC from single or even multi-phase conditions. So here we have an excellent solution to connect and acquire all the high power signals in efficiency testing, as an example. 
or any high power application incorporating voltages up to plus minus a thousand volts. What we have here is an NHBM GenDAC uh, 1K amplifier and it has an input range of plus minus 20 millivolts up to plus minus a thousand volts and you see the uh, number one there next to the word range um, looking below on the slide um, I've noted that if an overload creates overheating the amplifier is automatically going to step up the range by factors of 10 until the overload disappears or even ground the input if the overload is above a thousand volts so a nice and unique safety measure for the equipment in case you do happen to inject let's say a thousand volts when it's on the 20 millivolt range you're not going to damage the amplifier because it provides automatic protection. In addition to that, the isolation channel to channel on this amplifier is 2,000 volts RMS, and the channel to chassis isolation is 1,000 volts RMS. Uh, the CAT2 specification is 600 volts RMS, CAT3, 300 volts RMS, and the maximum static error, which happens to be IEEE 1057 specification. Um, the worst combination of gain, offset, and integral nonlinearity error is 0.075% full scale. It's all a rather impressive uh, specification. You can sample up to 2 million samples per second on every channel and achieve a, a vertical resolution of up to 18 bits. In fact, speaking of vertical resolution, uh, this uh, next slide uh, clearly shows the importance of high vertical resolution. Uh, the diagram is actually the result of an experiment I did many years ago. Um, I acquired the overshoot of a switching power supply at power up and in fact I used a measurement system that had both uh, an 8-bit and a 12-bit digitizer and I acquired the data at the same uh, sample rate and equally expanded both uh, of the waveforms. Now you see that the 8-bit signal shows nothing but horizontal lines at each digitizer level due to the low vertical resolution. However, the 12-bit signal, which has uh, 16 times more vertical levels or higher resolution, uh, you can clearly see the switching frequency of the uh, power supply. Now the chart just above the diagram uh, gives a quick uh, representation of the smallest resolvable voltage based on the vertical resolution of each digitizer over a 20 volt full scale range as uh, one example. Here in this diagram I'm showing the uh, high voltage and high current direct connections going to the 1K V amplifier plus uh, the torque and speed connections all going to one single system. So to sum up the efficiency testing example, uh, the efficiency of an electrical vehicle drivetrain is only about 50 percent battery to road since traditional testing methods for improving efficiency have reached their limits because they require multiple pieces of equipment with no continuous recording of signals and no correlation of data across the drivetrain. And here we have one system acquiring all the high voltage and all the high current signals across the entire drivetrain, uh, including torque and speed, which results in continuous storage of all raw data, uh, synchronous acquisition of all data, all the data is stored and displayed in one system. In fact, all the power calculations are done per half cycle. And for additional safety, there's also an optical network cable enabling remote and safe operation, eliminating any high voltages from entering the control room. So for the first time in electrical drivetrains for electric vehicles and aircraft auxiliary power units, uh, researchers are able to see and correlate data between the output of the frequency inverter or converter and the motor or generator and greatly improve the system's efficiency to increase the driving distance of an electric vehicle and improve the power capabilities of an auxiliary power unit on an aircraft with safety in mind. So for more details and more additional information on efficiency testing you can go to hbm.com forward slash eDrive and there you're going to find articles, white papers, um, some of them um, entitled Seven Misconceptions About Testing of Electric Motors. Uh, there's one uh, entitled Efficiency Enhancement for the Drive of the Future. You'll also find brochures and data sheets on the data acquisition hardware called Genesis, uh, details on torque transducers, uh, case studies 
testing of electric and hybrid cars. And there's even a webinar on demand where you can watch details on efficiency testing on electrical drivetrains. Once again, that's uh, hbm.com forward slash eDrive. We're going to move, uh, move over to uh, switch gear testing, uh, circuit breaker testing, for example. It's a very demanding application because here uh, you've got currents up to hundreds of kiloamps which are interrupted while voltages up to several hundreds of kilovolts are present creating high electromagnetic fields. So this is going to require specific hardware and software to produce accurate and reliable test results while meeting international standards. So the hardware challenges include isolation, amplifier drift, noise, electromagnetic immunity, and battery operation. Software challenges include data integrity, repeatability, and productivity. Now there is a complete worldwide proven solution that is fully compliant with international standards and recommendations of the high power community. Now the proven hardware is designed to withstand severe electromagnetic environmental conditions using a high speed data acquisition system incorporating infinite isolation via a battery operated fiber optic isolated digitizer. Also uh, high speed test sequencer is used for accurate sequence and timing control incorporating fiber optic isolated outputs and inputs. And we'll talk about each of these in just a moment in more detail. And there's also proof in software that includes algorithms suggested by relevant standards and recommendations, including STL, the Short Circuit Testing Liaison Agreement, and UL489. So you can make analysis measurements such as recovery voltage and asymmetric symmetric current analysis. Starting with the uh, hardware, the 6600 isolated digitizer provides infinite isolation using a battery powered fiber optic isolated transmitter, which uh, does have two hot swappable rechargeable batteries that provide up to 24 hours of continuous operation and remote battery level monitoring. Now, as an alternative solution, if you're measuring only up to 10 kilovolts in your particular application, uh, there is an AC powered version available, which has up to 10 kV isolation for medium voltage applications and has a battery uh, backup uh, um, inside uh, the system itself. So each of these high voltage and medium voltage models provide extra shielding to withstand electric and magnetic field environments. And the connection between the high voltage or medium voltage transmitter is achieved through a fiber optic cable to the receiver in a mainframe, which can be up to 800 meters away. In fact, there may be several points throughout your lab that are a, of a different distance. So even the cable length correction is done automatically to prevent cross-channel skew. Now, it's completely controlled and operated remotely via software, and a maximum static error is 0.1% full-scale range and you can achieve up to 100 million samples per second on every channel with uh, 14 bits of resolution. Now a device called a test sequencer is often used to control the operation of a test sequence for switchgear or ballistic tests. In fact this digital BE3200 test sequencer shown at the top right uh, that replaces the traditional electromechanical systems with microprocessor precision. In fact, it offers up to 64 optically isolated outputs and eight optically isolated start qualifier inputs. And it's best to have a test sequencer that includes a set of qualifier inputs because that will only start a test sequence if all the doors and switches are properly set to ensure additional safety to equipment and personnel. Now you also, on this test sequencer, have the ability to synchronize from 16 hertz to 400 hertz. The timing resolution is of one electrical degree. There's extensive interlocking and safety features available on the system. And software offers remote control in milliseconds, cycles, or degrees of phase via optically isolated USB, ensuring additional safety. Now on the right you can see uh, a sample overview of the software where you can uh, set the timing 
of every optically isolated output. Now the perception software provides complete control, display, and automated analysis and reporting capabilities. Then we have the STL analysis option, which will provide fast and repeatable results in compliance to STL and U UL489 standards. In fact, the analysis includes transit recovery results on single or three-phase systems plus symmetric and asymmetric current. And on the right, you see a list of some of the predefined STL and UL analysis functions uh, in the STL operation manual, uh, each implemented analysis function is referenced to the relevant paragraph in the STL technical report and uh, provides a complete explanation with diagrams uh, for each analysis function. Now you can also easily create your own custom analysis equations incorporating any of the uh, STL and UL489 algorithms. So in summary, uh, you can get more details on switchgear testing by going to hbm.com forward slash power and you can click on the switchgear testing link on that page. And there you can obtain more information on the hardware and the software, the Genesis data acquisition system, the fiber, opt fiber optic isolated digitizer, the test sequencer, um, the analysis according to the STL, and uh, also software customization. We even have a FAQs page that you can obtain additional information on some of the more common questions on STL. Now we're going to move over to the high voltage impulse testing application. And here we have uh, power grids that are exposed to lightning strikes. In fact, damage to one or several elements may even result in partial loss of power distribution capability, unsatisfied customers, and even a high cost of repair. So you can imagine it's uh, quite important for testing transformers, surge arresters, isolators, and switch gear because it's part of the quality proving process documenting a component's electric strength. So this requires, uh, again, specific hardware and software to produce accurate and reliable test results while meeting the international standards. Again, here in the high voltage impulse testing application, there is a complete worldwide proven solution that is fully compliant with international IEC standards and consists of perfectly matched components, which is a very important part of this test. High speed transient recorder with integrated PC or tethered to your existing PC laptop is available, incorporating a similar fiber optic isolation system as described for switchgear testing. So on the right, you can see the Gen 2i with an integrated PC, or you can use your own PC tethered to, just below that, the ISO 5600M, which is a tethered solution that provides the ability to do impulse testing. Um, the, the next uh, item down, high voltage 50 to 1 impulse attenuator is used with large standard LIMO style, uh, LIMO style connectors uh, which are found in most high voltage impulse labs and that's uh, uh, there's a picture of that in the top right uh, corner of the slide that's the 50 to 1 impulse attenuator connected in turn to the isolated uh, fiber optic transmitter the uh, automated impulse analysis software increases the productivity and consistently measures the parameters of impulse waveforms in accordance with the IEEE and IEC specifications. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But essentially what it does is provide reduced and full wave, uh, full voltage waveforms for imposed visual comparison. In fact, you can even make measurements and calculations that comply with current or, if you so choose, the new standards, including the K-factor for revision of the IEEE, uh, excuse me, the IEC, 6060-1 and dash 2. So here on this page we see a test bench set up uh, going from let's say right to left uh, starting from let's see the middle of the diagram at the uh, existing labs voltage divider we call F. Um, we then connect to item E which is the high voltage 50 to 1 impulse attenuator which is uh, capable of accepting up to 2000 volts RMS 
That's the device we showed you in the previous slide. Now here in this example, the 500 volts is at the attenuator input, and then 10 volts is at the output, which is connected to L, the battery-operated high-voltage fiber optic isolated digitizer transmitter, which outputs the fiber signal, M as in Mary, to the fiber optic receiver, N as in Nancy, which is connected to B as in boy, the PC running the perception software for control and analysis of the impulse test. So in this example, the advantages compared to a traditional test setup uh, include uh, no electrical connection between the test cell signals and the measurement equipment and PC powered in the control room. So this creates a safe environment for both the user and the equipment. There's also no equalizing currents between the test cell earth connection and the mains earth connection. Here again, the perception software provides complete control, display, and automated analysis and reporting capabilities. And when you include the HVIA analysis option, which is the high voltage impulse analysis, it provides fast and repeatable results in compliance to IEC international standards, including UP, T1, T2, and so on, as you can see in the uh, result window on the right. Now, lightning impulses as well as switching impulses are analyzed, and the characteristic parameters are calculated automatically. In fact, uh, lightning impulses with either overshoot, isolation, um, chopping, or a combination of the three are analyzed without user interaction, and waveforms can also be overlaid for comparison, for example, full and reduced, to determine any changes in their characteristics. Now, there's also integrated task fail indicators with user definable limits, which increase testing throughput and productivity. And you can also choose to use the existing standards or the new K-factor method. So, in sum up, where you can uh, obtain additional information on impulse testing details, you can go to hbm.com forward slash power, and then you'll see a link called High Voltage Impulse Testing. Just click on that link and you'll be able to obtain more information, including brochures, data sheets, and manuals for the hardware, the Genesis High-Speed Data Acquisition System, the fiber optic isolated digi uh, digitizers, the high-voltage impulse attenuator, uh, alternative laboratory setups, in addition to the one we just showed you previously, plus the perception high-voltage impulse analysis software um, calculating according to the international standards. There's also an FAQ section with some of the more common questions on the impulse analysis software. And finally, here's one of my favorite applications which resulted in a new product, lightning monitoring. In fact, you may have wondered why rockets are launched from Florida. Well, the advantage is that Florida is closer to the equator and the Earth's rotation gives an extra push so less fuel is needed going into space. Now, the disadvantage, of course, is Florida is the lightning capital of the country. So they, they get to uh, cheer that on as a, as a, uh, <coughs> as a um, number one uh, lightning capital of the country. Uh, this diagram, in fact, is a five-year flash density map from 1996 to uh, 2000. So you can see where most of the red is located. So the big question is, uh, how do you launch a large metal craft in the lightning capital of the country? Well, you need a lightning protection system. And in fact, you can see the tall metal lightning rod on top of the launch pad, which is designed to intercept nearby lightning. Uh, what you can't see in the diagram or the picture, which uh, happens to be a series of the metal wires attached to the lightning rod at the top, uh, which route electricity away from the craft. Now, the lightning monitoring system uh, detects lightning strikes whenever the spacecraft is outside the vehicle assembly building 24-7 and while the spacecraft is transported to the pad via the mobile launcher platform and while the, at the pad waiting to be launched again 24-7 so basically it's measuring induced currents and voltages at multiple points using multiple sensors surrounding the craft and multiple points help identify where high induced currents reside hence where possible damage may exist. So the main objective here is to quickly identify any part of the spacecraft that may be exhibited uh, by a, uh, a spike due to nearby lightning strike. 
Now, traditionally, before the installation of such a system, if there was any uh, lightning that existed nearby, the entire spacecraft would have to be examined, which would cause a significant delay in launch for several days, costing millions of dollars. And now, multiple points throughout the spacecraft are monitored, and just the specific area of the spacecraft where the spike was monitored can be examined, making for quick repairs and or checkups, saving millions of dollars in delays. Well, here is one of the largest high-power labs in the world. So what you have in the forefront um, is the launch pad 39A. Here you see the lightning rod at the top of the pad, and that has been commonly used for uh, space shuttle launches. Um, the launch pad 39B in the background in the middle is a 39B is designed and set up for future larger spacecraft launches uh, using three 594 feet lightning towers and rods, which you can see in the background. So, in this lightning monitoring system, the technical requirements to meet the demands of this application included uh, record and measure lightning impulse wave shapes at 100 million samples per second with 25 megahertz bandwidth and high resolution, um, capable of measuring up to at least 64 channels per mainframe um, in a data acquisition system with uh, window triggering from any channel. Now the fiber optic isolation requirements included isolation to isolate the test point from the recorder and long cable lengths up to 12 kilometers to measure many different points throughout the craft. iRig synchronization was another technical requirement to maintain better than 250 nanosecond synchronization between channels regardless of the length of the fiber cable. The exterior had to be stainless steel type 304 because it does not stain, corrode, or rust as easily as ordinary steel and the example shown at the right is the uh, gateway arch which is clad entirely in stainless steel type 304. It needed to have an extended temperature range, increased operating temperature to near 70 degrees uh, centigrade during launch and hot summer days. Plus the shock and vibration specification needed to meet mill standard specifications and be able to withstand the shock and vibration of a near rocket launch environment. And finally, no integrated batteries. It needed to have a DC power input. So this is very time consuming and sometimes impossible uh, to change batteries at nearly, let's say, 120 measurement points throughout the launch pad. So powering the modules externally under control of the customer had to be provided. Also an output switch to remotely switch between DC power adapter and a battery supply, depending upon the distance of any lightning near the pad had to be provided. A uh, test signal, so that via software you could switch in a test signal to do a verification of the signal path for each of the of the uh, of, of each of the channels, and then remote control analysis and reporting was important, so that analysis uh, and the reports could be generated automatically for uh, every triggered condition. So this resulted in a new ruggedized fiber optic isolated digitizer system which is called the 7600 not only now used at NASA but also at high power substations and it's a perfect match for high powered ballistic applications as well. So this is the entire solution uh, from the fiber optic isolated transmitter at the top middle, uh, the Genesis data acquisition system shown at the right and at the bottom uh, middle here you have the perception software. So this met and exceeded the requirements right out of the box, ready to use, ready to run and acquire data. Um, just a quick uh, overview on the 7600. Um, it's based upon the 6600 series we talked about earlier with additional ruggedized specifications. Uh, practically all the specs below the dotted line you see here were added as a result of NASA's request including up to 12 kilometer fiber optic cable length with a single mode fiber optic transmission, minus 10 to plus 70 Celsius operating temperature, uh, overheat protection shutdown, military PRF 28800F class one shock, 
stainless steel 304 housing, DC powered, remote switched in test signal verification, remote TTL output so you can switch in or out an AC charger on the customer supplied external batteries powering the system. Now the 7600 fiber optic receiver was capable and is capable of accepting up to four 7600 transmitters using single mode fiber optic transmission and it includes 900 mega samples of transient memory. The mainframe can handle up to 16 slots of receivers and can up to uh, 25 mega samples or 50 megabytes per second. Um, it has uh, that capability for throughput uh, via a high speed 1 gigabit ethernet connection to your PC. Now the options included an iRig GPS and multi-mainframe synchronization for hundreds of channels with less than 100 nanosecond synchronization accuracy. And finally the software called Perception, uh, basically um, out of the box um, standard uh, off the shelf software with whatever flavor of options that are needed for the application and in this case um, real time display, control and analysis and the options included export, multi-monitor display, automated analysis, basic FFT, advanced automated reporting every time a trigger is received. A report can be automatically generated to display whatever signals that you customized in the report. Synchronized video playback, remote interfacing, and multi-mainframe control. In fact, uh, it quite easily integrates with Office Word and Excel. Um, there's also a unique review while recording mode, so even while the system is in the record mode waiting for a trigger, you can review that same recording file simultaneously. And the nice thing here is that you have StatStream, which is a registered trademark in the US and EU, and also patented in Germany, which it provides the ability to display large gigabytes of data in just seconds. More details on the Lightning Monitoring System application are available at our website, hbm.com. You can type in Lightning Monitoring System in the search box at our website, and then click on the link entitled HBM Protection of Spacecraft. There you're going to find brochures, data sheets, manuals on the data acquisition system, Genesis High Speed, uh, the Perception software, the fiber optic isolated digitizers, and system configuration details. There's also a white paper and hot note entitled Advanced Lightning Warning System protects spacecraft launches at Kennedy Space Center. So in summary, uh, just a quick reminder, more details on high power measurements are available at our website, hbm.com forward slash power, because that's going to take you directly to a page where you can click on any of these applications for more details, switchgear testing, high voltage impulse testing, and even an application we didn't even have time to talk about called Current Zero Testing, plus links to a lot of the hardware and software that we mentioned previously. So if you have any questions at this particular moment, you can type them into the WebEx Q&A dialog by selecting the Q&A icon in the WebEx toolbar at the top. I do want to note that today's presentation will be emailed to all attendees, and the webinar will also be posted on our website at hbm.com forward slash webinars. Now if you happen to have any additional technical questions beyond today or any time in the future, be sure and contact our technical support team. You can do that via email at support at usa.hbm.com or call toll free 1-800-578-4260. Alright, thank you Mike. Well, thank uh, you. Mike mentioned if anyone has any questions you can type them into the Q&A box within WebEx and we'd be happy to respond to those in real time. Mike, it looks like one person says you mentioned window triggering. Um, can you explain more about what that is? Yeah, uh, window triggering is used to detect a dip or maybe a peak pulse in a repetitive signal. Um, and as long as the repetitive signal remains between uh, two voltage levels uh, or two thresholds, 
uh, no trigger would be seen because you can s establish those le those thresholds, those levels. However, once the signal dips or peaks beyond the minimum or maximum predefined voltage level thresholds, uh, a trigger is detected and it acquires the data as an event. All right. What exactly would be considered high speed for the high power measurements? Well, for switchgear testing, uh, 10 million samples per second is considered high speed, um, whereas uh, in impulse testing, um, the specifications, the international standards, uh, um, basically dictate that you had to you have to have 100 mega samples per second. All right. And another question: um, Is it possible for the setups to be saved and and ways to get data to other programs? Yes, uh, actually, uh, the data and um, the setups can be saved. In fact, data and setups are automatically saved every time a acquisition is performed. And most user-friendly data acquisition systems will provide the capability of easily um, providing the ability to save the data and the setups for later recall, and then allowing uh, exporting of the data into numerous different data file formats and for uh, the Genesis Perception system, you I think there's over 20 different file formats you can choose from to export. And the nice thing is that you, know, you can choose to export a particular channel, or all the channels, or just maybe a set of channels, or all the data, or just data between the cursors, or maybe just the zoom data. So it's quite uh, flexible in that way. Great. Well, as Mike said, the email address is right here. So if you guys think of questions later, you're welcome to contact us. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Everyone have a good evening. Thank you.